We have finished discussing the simple linear regression model. Next, we are going to the multiple regression. So first, we will take a, take a look at the orbital variable bias. This is the main reason why we cannot rely so much on simple linear regressions. So after this orbital variable, variable bias, we will introduce the multiple regression model, which is used to solve the orbital variable bias. Third, we will talk about the OLS estimators. So similar to the simple linear regressions, we have some estimators to estimate the population beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, up to beta k. Fourth, we will talk about the measure of the fit, similar to the concept of the R square, but now we need to change, change a little bit for the R square concept to capture the effect of multiple regressions. Finally, we will give extra OLS assumptions with respect to the multiple regressions. Now, let's get started. The first is the omitted variable variable bias. This is our first OLS assumptions that the expected value of ui given xi is zero, such that the covariance between ui and xi is equal to zero. But in fact, this is this is difficult to capture if we omit some key variables. For example, if I do this, wage is equal to beta zero plus beta one times education plus ui. So this is quite reasonable because with more education, usually your wage will be higher. However, wage may depend on many other variables such as ability. So maybe a better model is a is something like this: beta zero plus beta one times education plus beta two your ability plus the error term vi. <coughs> Maybe the second, maybe the second equation can fully capture, or capture capture the determinant of wage in a better way. But if you just try to use the first equation, what will happen? So if you use the first equation to estimate the population, while the true equation should be the second one, you will you will resort to a case that the expected value of ui given xi is not equal to zero, such that you will violate the first assumptions. Why? Let's take a look. So if we try to do this, beta 1 is equal to covariance of x and u, now the x is education, and u is equal to beta 2 times ability. Plus vi derived by the variance of education. So this is equal to beta two times the covariance of education and ability derived by variance of education. And the second term, covariance between education and the error term, the true error term is equal to zero. So you can see that here the covariance of education and ability may not equal to zero, right? Maybe we, if you have more education, your ability is higher, or if you are higher, you can receive a better education. So this covariance term may not be equal to zero. And if the ability is one of the key determinants, beta 2 is not equal to 0. In this case, you can see that the beta 1 is equal to something that not captured in the model. So actually, we have a mathematical formula for the omitted variable bias. Beta 1 hat will go to beta 1 plus the correlation between u and x times the standard deviation of, of u divided by standard deviation of x. So why this is the case, let's go back to our beta 1 equation. Beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 plus 1 over n sum from i equal to 1 to n times x i minus x bar derived times u i derived by 1 over n sum from i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar square. So this the numerator is just equal to covariance between x and u. 
and the denominator is just equal to variance of x. Given that the correlation between x and u is the covariance of x and u derived by standard deviation of x times standard deviation of u. So covariance is equal to correlation times SD of x times SD of u. So this is equal to covariance of x u times SD of x SD of u derived by variance of x. Then this is equal to beta 1 plus covariance, covariance of x and u variance of u derived by variance of x plus SD of u divided by SD of x. Since variance is a positive value, this term must be positive. Therefore, it shows that if the correlation of x and u is not equal to zero, then the estimator beta 1 hat is not equal to beta 1. So if the correlation between x and u are positive, then beta 1 hat will be greater than beta 1. Beta 1 hat is overestimated. In, on the other hand, if the, this rho x u, the correlation is negative, in this case, beta 1 hat will be smaller than beta 1. Then beta 1 hat is underestimating. So the existence of omitted variable bias leads to this consequence. That's why we need to add another variables to rectify these problems. So here comes to the multiple regression model. So this is the simple multiple regression model. Y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. Rather, so rather than just xi, we add beta 2 x2. First, we, we need to know what is the meaning of beta 1 and beta 2. So just assume now x1 is no longer x1, but x1 plus delta x1. So the value of x1 changed by a little bit. Since the value of since the value of x one change, y will also change by a certain amount. Then we we use this green equation minus the blue equation. What we get is delta y equal to beta one times delta x x one. Therefore, beta one is equal to delta y derived by delta x i. So in the similar manner, beta 2 is equal to delta y derived by delta x2. So we have the interpretation of beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1 is equal to delta y delta xi holding x2 constant. So this is, the, this is called partial effect. Beta 1 is the partial effect of y with respect to change in x1. So beta 2 is change delta y divided by delta x2 holding x1 constant. In multiple regression model, we can distinguish the effect of change in x1 and x2 with the effect of beta 1 and beta 2. So we can solve the omitted variable bias problem. So next, we are going to see what should be the OLS estimator. Since now we know in the population, the true equation may be with two variables, x1 and x2. So how to estimate? So let's introduce our old friends, OLS estimator. Okay, now to, be, to further confuse you, now assume that yi take k value. So this is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat x1i plus beta 2 hat x2i up to beta k times xki. So it takes k variables. Then how can we get the beta 1 hat, beta 2 hat up to beta k hat? So we will use the same trick. This is the error term of the residual, not explained by the model. The true value minus the predicted value. So the first thing is to sum all the re residual square. That is equal to 
yi minus b0 just replace beta 0 head to be b0 minus b1 x1 i minus b2 x2 i minus dot 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 up to minus b k x k i square next we have to do the first order conditions we need to round the sum of all residual square round b0 and set equal to 0 again round all the square of residual round b1 set equal to 0 until round all the residual square round bk and set equal to 0 so what we get is that first if we do the first order condition with respect to b0 we will get negative 2 the summation yi minus b0 minus b1x1i minus dot 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 up to bkxki and equal to 0 if we do round b1 what we get is the first part is the same why we have an x1i here so we do the same thing for the b2 b3 up to the last term bk so the first order condition for the bk is equal to this now we have k plus 1 equation from 0 to k and we have k variables b0 to bk to the solve so theoretically we can solve the solve the equations so let's replace the this kind of equation to matrix so assume y is equal to the vector of the y while matrix x take the form of all the x so just replace that by x1 prime x2 prime up to xk prime okay and beta be beta 0 beta 1 up to beta k so this k plus 1 equation can be replaced by negative 2 times matrix x prime times y minus x b and equal to 0 so how can we get this b since this negative 2 so in maximizing the value the negative 2 can be can be derived to the right hand side so we can cancel this negative 2 in the matrix so what is remains is x prime y minus x b equal to 0 then beta hat is just equal to x prime x and take the inverse times x prime y so theoretically we can figure out all the beta 0 up to beta k by this matrix